Welcome to Physiology Bites, everyone. My name is Ben, and today we're going to be talking about action potentials. Now, action potentials are a vital electrical communication tool in our body. Now, they're used by many different cell and cell types, but today we'll be focusing on neurons and neuronal action potentials, and that's because these action potentials are a vital form of communication for neurons. They allow a signal to be transmitted incredibly rapidly from the body of a neuron all the way to the axon terminals, okay? And from that, we'll get the release of neurotransmitters and that will have an effect on the postsynaptic cell. But what actually is an action potential? What does it look like when we look at a single action potential? Now, it's often represented like this. Okay, we can see we have our resting membrane potential, a depolarization phase, a repolarization, and then it returns back to normal. All of this happens very quickly, within a few milliseconds. So let's first go into our what the resting membrane potential is, so understand this a little bit more. Now, first off, when I talk about membrane potential, what I'm talking about is a difference in charge between the extracellular and the intracellular space. So when we express what the charge of the intracellular space is relative to the extracellular extracellular space, we actually get a negative reading. And there's a few different reasons for this. One is that we have a number of different, we have a number of different ions, so ch charged ions inside and outside of the cell, and they're distributed differently. So we have high sodium outside of the cell, low sodium inside, and potassium is the reverse. So we have these different distributions of positively and negatively charged ions. We also have different permeability of the membrane to these ions. Potassium ions can very can much more easily leak out into the extracellular space. So that helps keep the membrane, the inside of the cell more negative. The last thing which helps is a lot of the proteins inside of the cell also contribute a negative charge. So that's why our resting that's why our resting membrane potential is negative for those three reasons. Now, throughout this presentation, I'm going to be talking about the phases of action potential, and the ions will move from something that we call the electrochemical gradient. Now, what the electro electrochemical gradient is a combination of two separate driving forces, the first being a chemical gradient. So a chemical gradient is when a substance moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So if we're talking about ions, and in this case, sodium ions, sodium will move from an area of high concentration too low. And this is what happens during depolarization, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So that's one driving force, the movement of ions from high to a low concentration area. That's one driving force which moves ions. Electrical gradients are a little bit trickier. Electrical gradients are when the charge in and outside of a cell alter how an ion moves. So in other words, whether an ion will move into and out of a cell depends on the charge inside or outside of a cell. Now, what this means is individual to each ion. But to give you a very simplistic example, positively charged ions, for example, will want to move to areas of lower or negative charge. They won't want to move to areas of higher charge. So the electrochemical gradient is a combination of these two driving forces. The chemical gradient which is trying to push, which is trying to push an ion from a high concentration to a low concentration, and an electrical gradient where an electrical current is trying to move an ion. The net balance or the or the kind of summed effect of this is what we term the electrochemical gradient. What happens when these two driving forces combine? We get that movement of a particular ion. And it'll make more sense when I show that when we talk about depolarization, repolarization very, very soon. So that's our resting membrane potential. Okay, before we've had anything really happen, this is the membrane polarity which our membrane will sit at because of those distribution of ions, the permeability, and some of the proteins in the cells in the cell. So now let's talk about depolarization. So depolarization is when we get this positive influx okay, a voltage inside into the cell. So you can see the cell becomes more positively charged. Now, the reason for that is a number of stimuli will act as what we call excitatory stimuli and will get the cell to what we call the threshold potential. So the threshold potential is a point by which if this threshold is reached, depolarization will occur. Okay, and it's what we call an all or nothing, all or nothing principle. So either we reach threshold and a depolarization occurs, or we don't and a depolarization doesn't occur. There's no kind of in between. So the reason this depolarization occurs is because at this threshold, voltage gated sodium channels, which is shown here in blue, open. 
These voltage gated sodium channels, when they open, they're quite wide and they let a lot of sodium in rapidly. Now, remember, sodium, okay, is high in our extracellular space and low in our intracellular space. So there's a huge electrochemical gradient moving sodium from the outside of our cell to the inside of our cell. Because positive ions now moving into the cell, the cell becomes more positively charged, which is what we see here. Let's talk about the next step now, which is repolarization. So you can see in repolarization, the charge goes essentially back down, back down to and even below our resting levels. And the reason for this is because during repolarization, what occurs is now that we've got at the start of repolarization, you can see where the inside of the cell is nice and positively charged. This inactivates those sodium channels. So sodium will stop coming in. So we've lost that driving force moving positively charged ions into the cell. Potassium, voltage-gated potassium channels will then open. And when these voltage-gated potassium channels open, much like the sodium channels, it lets a lot of potassium in. But where this is different is we can see now potassium is very high in the intracellular space and very low in the extracellular space. So what this means is potassium moves in the opposite direction to what sodium does, again, via its electrochemical gradient. We've got these two driving forces. We've got this driving force pushing potassium from inside of a cell to outside of a cell. Now remember, because potassium has a positive charge, when we lose these positively charged ions from within the cell, the cell goes back to being more negative. All right, so you can see now that the depolarization is caused by the influx of sodium ions, and the repolarization is due to the efflux or the leaving of positively charged potassium ions. And this leads us now to our undershoot. Now, the undershoot is when essentially these potassium channels stay open a little bit longer than what they need to, and you can see they go, uh, the, our, the, in, the charge inside of the cell actually ends up being lower than our resting levels, all right? Once these potassium channels actually close, we start to get recovery um, to our resting levels because all those factors which help maintain our normal resting membrane potential, which I talked about at the start. But it does take time. And so this is what we call a latency period, meaning that the neuron can't be activated within this latency period or this undershoot time. So it can only be activated when it's back to roughly its resting membrane, resting membrane potential. So the final point I want to make is looking at this, you might, you might think to yourself, well, okay, so that's how an action potential works. Sodium comes in, potassium comes out, and we get this transient increase and decrease in voltage. But how does it spread? The reason it spreads is if I want you to imagine an action potential starting up here at the body of a neuron, okay? When it starts, once sodium starts to come in during the depolarization phase, that sodium will make, will make other voltage-gated sodium channels also reach threshold. So by sodium coming in, it starts off a chain reaction, meaning once, uh, once uh, action potential starts here, it will trigger sodium channels next to it, which will then trigger the sodium channels next to those. And so that's why a depolarization can rapidly spread down a neuron. And this is incredibly quick. To give you an example of this, a myelinated neuron can transmit, some of the large myelinated neurons in the body can transmit a signal at 50 meters per second. So all of this, what I've shown to you, something which took me several minutes to explain, all happens in a tiny fraction of a second. All right, so there it is. There's action potentials. Bye, everyone.